Hi, I'm Pastor Day with Declaration Church, and I'm pretty sure most of us have gone through the exercise of, how would your best friend describe you? Or how would you describe your best friend? And when I ask that question of you now, okay, what kind of words come to mind? Think about that. Or what if I said, how would you describe your boss in three words? Or how would you describe your oldest child, or your sister, or your brother, or your mom, or your dad? And just pick any number of different people in your life, and I would say, how would you describe that person? What words would you use to describe that person? And you could just write them down or you could speak them out loud, whatever, just kind of come up with some ideas. And the interesting thing is a lot of times the words we use with people that we think positively about will be pretty consistent. And it's the same on the other side. People that we don't generally think of in a positive light, we use a lot of the same kinds of words. But what I find interesting is that not that we use the same words in both cases, you know, we use words like kind and funny and fun and interesting and friendly and loving and supportive over here in the positive group for all kinds of different people. And then we use completely different words over here like aggressive or grumpy or hard to please or, or those kinds of things over here in this group, in the negative group, okay? That's, that's interesting, but that's not the thing I was thinking of. What I find interesting a lot of times is the way that other people describe us is not the way that we would describe ourselves. Now, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes we're really good. We're very self-aware. We know how other people would describe us. We're really on point with that. But for the most part, what I found in life is that we get surprised more often than we think we should. When someone says, this is how I would describe so-and-so, sometimes that's not exactly how we imagine they would describe us. And we might think, well, that person's gonna think I'm fun and funny, and that person's gonna think that I'm you know, attractive and fun to be around, or that I'm easy to I'm easy going and easy to deal with, and I'm you know, I'm organized and, and intelligent, and, and then we find out that maybe they don't see us the same way. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, because I know I have, uh, both positively and negatively. You know, I've had people come and say, you know, I used to think that you were this, 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 and that. And what I found over the last few, you know, months and years is that, you know, you're really not those things at all. Uh, and, and that's really good that that would be the case. But it's not always the case. Sometimes it goes the other way. And, and maybe you've had that same experience. But we're not always aware of what other people think of us. And... As I started to think about that after reading through a verse, and, and I have another video on the same verse, but just a different portion of it, because scripture a lot of times is way more involved and way deeper than what just one video or one short 10-minute you know, segment can handle. And what I find interesting about this particular verse is I started to think about those things, about how people would describe me or how I describe people in my life and how I would describe people that I've had experience within my life that are really no longer a part of my life and then I came to you know what are the words that people who don't know Jesus people who are outside of the church group how would they describe Christians if people would say they're not a Christian they're not a follower of Jesus they're not a disciple of Jesus how would they describe Christians and the reason I started thinking about that is because there are a couple words in this verse in Hebrews chapter two that come across that I think should absolutely describe the church, should absolutely describe Christians. And I think if we polled the public, not people who are a part of the church, not other Christians, but people who aren't yet followers of Jesus, who have never surrendered their life to Jesus, if we said, how would you describe Christians? I wonder if these two words would come up very often. And yet I think they're at the core of who we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to live because they were two words at the core of who Jesus is. There were two words at the core of his identity and the way he interacted with the world to the point that there were religious people who criticized him because these were so central to who he is. It's in Hebrews chapter two, verse 17. And it says, therefore, 
He had to be made like his brothers in every respect. So it's talking about Jesus being made human, becoming one of us, so that he could have every experience similar to us. In fact, it says in another portion of Scripture, Jesus was tempted in every way, just like us, but he never sinned. So he, he had to become one of us so he could experience life on that level. And so he had to be like us in every way. There couldn't be any, anything missing from Jesus in, in his humanity. He had to be fully human in order to be the sacrifice for us, in order to have that experience, in order to relate to us on the level of life so that he could understand how we deal with things and what life is like for us. He had to be one of us. And so he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. So propitiation is that idea of him becoming the sacrifice necessary for us to be forgiven. He's the one that paid the penalty. He's the one that paid the price so that you and I can have forgiveness because he is merciful and faithful. He's merciful and faithful. He looks at us with eyes of mercy. He looks at us through the lens of love because he loves us as people. He loves us. Not just those of us who know him and are following him and and are trying to live our lives as a part of his body. No, 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 no. He loves every single human being on the planet regardless of whether you or I or anyone else might think that it's deserved, he loves us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, that, the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That's in Romans chapter 8. And that's amazing. But these two words, merciful and faithful, are at the core of Jesus' identity. They are at the center of who he is and how he interacts with the world and other people in the world. And my question Uh, The question that arose within me when I read that is, is that how the people of the world would describe us, the church, the body of Christ, his followers today? And I had to say, honestly, I'm not sure those are the two words that would come up most often when describing you and I as the church You and I as followers of Jesus, you and I as disciples, as Christians, if we asked those who are outside of our membership to describe us. I think that those two words should be the first two words that come to mind for them. Merciful, faithful, loving, These are the kinds of words that should describe us as followers of Jesus. And the challenge today is that At least in the Western society, I don't think those are the three, four words. These are two of the main words that would come from the mouths of those who do not follow Jesus to describe those of us who do. And that's not right. That's not the way it's supposed to work. That's not the way it should be. And we, you and I, as followers of Jesus, need to be aware enough of that truth, of that fact, and then willing enough to do something about it. So that's that's the challenge for us today, is how can we live in a way that those who don't know Jesus would describe you and I as merciful and faithful? How can we live in a way that those who don't yet know Jesus would say, man, those Christians, I'll tell you what, they're merciful, they're faithful. And I want that to be a challenge for you. It's a challenge for me. It's something that we need to be conscious of and to be actively pursuing that where we can live in a way that people would describe us that way. They would say, he's merciful, she's merciful, 
She's faithful. He's faithful. They're good people. They're people I want to be around. They're people I want to be like. They're people who make a difference in the world in a positive way. That is how we should be described. And so that's my challenge to you today is evaluate yourself. Is this how those who don't know Jesus would describe you? And if not, Start to pray about how you can change that and begin to make those changes so that you and I can be that positive influence in the world. You and I can share the love and life of Jesus with others. And I want to encourage you, it's possible. It's possible with the Holy Spirit and Jesus in your life to make those changes and begin to influence the world in that positive way because the apostles did it. The early Christians did it. People have done it throughout history. So it's possible for you and I as well. And that's the encouragement. So I hope that this video is challenging to you, but also encouraging that you and I can make that positive change in the world if we will live in a way that makes it obvious that we are merciful and faithful, just like our high priest, Jesus. So if this video has been a challenge to you and you've liked this video, it's been encouraging to you, give it, a love, give it a thumbs up, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel so that you and I can continue to walk with each other through the scripture as we grow. Thanks so much for allowing me to be a part of your faith journey today. As always, I'm Pastor David and I'm out.